My name is Luam Kahasai. I'm a senior studying social entrepreneurship with a minor in sociology. And I get the pleasure of graduating in a few weeks alongside my cadre members. Um, shout out to cadre two. Um, I describe my experience at Warner as a costly interruption. And for that, I am grateful. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote, the major problem in life is learning how to handle those costly interruptions. A costly interruption is something that occurs that shapes us, that challenges us to engage in something that we thought we wouldn't be able to. One experience of a costly interruption that I faced at Warner was when I decided to run for student body vice president. I was already on leadership at the time, and I felt like voices and perspectives like mine weren't being heard. It was challenging because I also realized the position of president and vice president was previously and mostly held by white students and males. And so, I was trying to figure out, why am I running? Why do I want to do this? Um, and I felt called to, to challenge kind of systems that were pre-existing, that were kind of saying, your voice doesn't matter, your voice does not exist. And I went up there and I did my speech and I thought, I have to say all the right things. I need to win so I can implement new stuff. And that didn't happen. Well, I did win, but I didn't say what was on my speech because all I really wanted to do was to be heard, was to be given an opportunity to say what was on my heart and to, cha to challenge the norms that were pre-existing. And that costly interruption of running for student body vice president has changed the way I go about building community and creating spaces for students to be heard. Another costly interruption that I faced um, during my time here was in my program as a social entrepreneurship major. I took a class earlier this year, Entrepreneurial Leadership Within an Urban Context. It's a hefty class. Um, and one of the quiz questions that I had was, in the context of social entrepreneurship, it helps if you are a fill in the blank. And among the possible options were linear thinker, young person, and white male. And when I answered that it helps to be a white male, I got the answer wrong. And that was frustrating. It was frustrating because we had yet to have conversations of power and privilege in the classroom. It was frustrating because it was saying you, as a woman of color, taking social entrepreneurship and majoring in this, and one day hoping to do this in your future may not be possible. Um, so I decided to have conversations with my professors alongside students who were willing to engage in conversations of diversity, and we were able to do something about it. As a result, the professor of this department is taking time over the summer to revamp the curriculum so that it may be inclusive of more voices. My time here at Warner has been filled with costly interruptions and I am thankful for that. But I've learned how to speak in the power of my own voice because it is my responsibility to challenge systems that stifle the voices of marginalized people. Now I aim to be a costly interruption. Um, Thank you. Um, I also want to let you guys know that we live in a world where costly interruptions occur every single day. And I know that there are people who are unable to respond. There are voices being unheard and there are issues going on all around us. And when people allow themselves to remain untroubled, they themselves become a part of the problem. I want to use my, my own voice to interrupt the untroubled world we find ourselves in. If I didn't have these experiences at Warner through Act 6, I would not be the type of woman that I am today, fully embracing these costly interruptions with hugs and a little bit of fights along the way. Now, you have the opportunity to be a costly interruption for students like me, to rise up and create ways for Act 6 students to change the norms and patterns of their own lives. Your support encourages and equips us but for us to engage, we first need you to engage. So please do so. Thank you for letting me kindly interrupt your afternoon. So, throughout my life, I faced the struggle of not having a permanent situation. My mom had a stroke as I was transitioning into high school. She was not able to take care of herself or me. This is when things became unstable in my life. My dad was not around. He and I never had a tight relationship because of his absence in my upcoming, 
But because I had no other place to go, I decided to move in with him. I stayed with him for about two years. Throughout this day, I was free in the streets and experimented as teens do with gangs, drugs, partying, and falling into relationships I shouldn't have. It was not until I found Christ by joining an after-school program called Young Life that I was able to begin to straighten my life out and figure out who and what God was about. It was never shown to me that other people like myself shared similar stories and that stories like mine had connection within the gospel. I never would have thought a kid like me would ever earn a scholarship because no one believed in me, including myself. I never thought I was good at academics or that I was a leader. I was raised to think those things weren't even cool coming out of my neighborhood. I wanted to fit into a group, but I thought I needed to be like everyone else who was black like me in order to do that. It was always a pressure of having to be down to be accepted. Coming out of the north side of Portland, it was hard to tell myself I did not need to be like others. It was hard to find what was important. Seeing the results of what being cool meant as far as consequences challenged me to change. It was not about education where I came from. It was about earning respect, being bad, and looking cool. But this never felt like the place for me to be is what I later realized. As I grew away from wanting to be down to wanting to be educated and become something, I noticed people re respected it and wanted to be like me. It was always surprising because I never thought that was how I was supposed to be. After two years of staying with my dad and maturing some, there came a time when I got sick of being yelled at by him and his continued absence while living with him. My dad was an alcoholic. After one night of coming home, waking me up from my sleep and yelling at me again, I told him, I'm tired of what is going on around here. He told me, if you don't like it, get out. The next day, I packed two big garbage bags and rode my bike from Northeast 63rd and Sandy to North Portland, St. John's. I began to couch surf place to place and stay with different households throughout the rest of my high school journey. Never knowing if I would have a roof over my head the next day after being kicked out from my dad's house and knowing my mom could not take care of me was always a scary place to be. But I was always ready for whatever came my way. I had no choice. I had to be. Because of Young Life, Act 6, and Warner Pacific College, my life has been turned around. If you had asked me if I would get out of my neighborhood, graduate, and become something, that, and become something back then, I would have shook my head and told you no. My mom was sick from her stroke. She told me not to go to college because she wanted me to take care of her. My support was minimum. Who would have thought I would make it out? However, I knew that if I was not doing well where I was at and family was something holding me back because I had to live into their dreams, I was never going to grow. Even though I love my family, there comes a time when you have to say no and go a separate way and let the, do and let the Lord deal with the tribulations. I couldn't tell you how I got through high school with all the struggles that happened to me moving from school to school and house to house after my mom's stroke and being kicked out of my dad's house. And that's always been a struggle for me to figure out life because of that. Without teachers, counselors, and after school programs, I do not think I would have made it. I would not have been able to figure out how to get through my lostness and pain. Education has never been easy for me, not now or back then. I started my freshman year of high school with a 1.7 GPA. My sophomore year, I earned a 3.7 GPA. Now that I am here at Warner, I have a cumulative of a 3.0 GPA.
Without people like Anthony Jordan, Ben Sin, Pamela Ryan, Kia Smith, and everyone else in the pro Act 6 program, I would not have made it this far. Without Rod Johansson supplying me with the best tutors to support me, to support me, it would have been a struggle to get homework in and figure out how to build a schedule and prioritize my life. The teachers Bill, Rod, and Dr. Rosado all taught me how to value education and how to discipline myself in order for me to have a success. Also, Dr. Glenn was a big part of my life at this college. He taught me a lot of things regarding culture, race, diversity, music, and many other things. But most importantly, he mentored me. So thank you all. As of now, I am getting married shortly after graduation, in fact, the next day, and moving to my... And I'll be moving to Maui to live with my beautiful fiance, Lisa Marie. <laughs> my plan is to work with middle or high school students to some capacity and apply my knowledge of human development. Act 6 and Warner Pacific College have both helped me realize who I am and the gifts I possess to help me better understand my calling in serving the community wherever I may land in life. This scholarship needs to be given to people like me because the reality is, is that without it, they often do not find hope or an escape to the situation they are in. They become lost. They drop out of school or graduate high school and do not strive to go any further. Without the support of you all, they face many risks like I did, limiting them from their opportunities. This scholarship needs to be given to them to help them find a way to make their obstacles become opportunities. This way they can lead. They need to be loved and supported and for someone to help them discover their passion. If you help them do that, I am certain they will do whatever it takes to continue that journey upon discovery. Thank you. <laughs>